What's up, what's up, my dudes? I should have put out this video last year, but hence, better late than never. One of my favorite storylines of all time. I mean, this left an imprint in my brain. 1984, I believe, is when this came out. Was it 84? 84, you see that? Yeah, you see that too, right? Yeah, I read this thing probably 20 times over, you know, just in the 80s alone. I had all 12, of course. I couldn't wait to pick up the next one. The Hulk lifting 4 billion tons. Spider-Man fighting Titania one-on-one, -on -one, a woman that was like 10 times his strength. The first time I saw the Human Torch go Nova and melt something inside of Ultron's body. Uh, yeah, Ben Grimm turning human for the first time that I had seen that. The She-Hulk getting beat up, I mean effed up by uh, Titania and a bunch of supervillains. Yeah, she got really beat down, man. And one of the... It was brutal. That was brutal to watch. Like you could feel her pain. You know, Captain America going one-on-one -on -one with Doctor Doom, the Beyonder Power Doom. Great storyline, man. Just tremendous Thor, who's... I wonder why they chose to leave Thor out of this one, right? He's only on a, up here... But Thor destroying a, a mountain peak that was going to crush the base of the superheroes. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, you, you don't remember stuff like that in today's comics. But, um, yeah, we owe it all to Kenner and DC because, you know, Kenner put out a superpowers line for DC's superheroes. So, you know, Jim Shooter wanted... And 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 uh, was it uh, Mattel? I think it was Mattel that wanted to put out a toy line for Marvel. So Shooter came out and did uh, Secret Wars, wrote Secret Wars, and and I'm glad that they did it. And then they came out with the toys. I wish I could afford the toys, but my family at the time, man, we were in bad shape financially, dude. I mean, I could afford the comics. At least at least I had fun reading the comics, you know. But, uh, yeah, we couldn't afford the toys. I even liked the superpowers line, you know. But, um, but yeah. I, later on, it took me like 30 years to find what I'm going to tell you today to give you the information that I now have. All right, when you go searching for a book like this, you, you, you're going to find it all over the place because there's like a million copies of these. I don't know the exact print run, but it has to be over a million copies that they printed of the first print. It seems these two are for first prints, right? That's the direct, that's the newsstand. If you ever see something like this, that's the sam that's the second print when you have the symbiote Spider-Man. Always will be the second print. Second print is definitely without a shadow of a doubt. I'm not going to say rarer, but it's, there's less, much less of the second print than the first print. So this will sell at a premium without a doubt. You can tell it's a second print uh, by the emblem. And if you open it up, it'll say second print right on the front page. Right? Okay. You go out on eBay or whatever marketplace you get your comic books. And on the centerfold... Where is it? Next one. Yeah, there it is right there. You're going to see a blue Galactus. That's actually not the only thing. What happened was that when they printed these, I guess they must have set the printer on 
two pages, not just one, two pages. Technically three, if you include these two, and then the other one that I'm gonna show you, which is the first page. But see how Galactus is blue, right? Uh, and people sell that as if that's rare, but that's not rare. This is what you want to see. This is rarer. But this one right here is the second print. So this is one of the things of the second print that differentiate from the first print. The other one is the front page. That right there. And then the front page for the first print, that right there. You see, ah, come on, I don't want to mess up my second printing because it's still pretty decent condition, that second print. Probably about an 8.0, but I'm probably making it a 7.5 right now. All right, ah, uh, see that? The entire coloring for the reds and the yellows is like backwards. See, even the even the thing is like more orangey, reddish than in the second printing. If you the real rare, and then this one truly is rare. If you can find it, look in your collection. And then whenever you find this book, most people don't even know, man. They don't even know. So people that sell it. Ask, ask them, like if you go to a convention or a comic book store, you see this bagged, just ask them to look, look, look inside the book. As soon as you flip the page, if you see the first page having red, that means that's the Blue Galactus. That's your first hint if you're looking at the first print. You look at a first print and you turn the page and it's yellow. Now you want to look for that Galactus. Voila. That's your rare copy. That is super rare. I don't know the rarity. This is a first print. I don't know the numbers. But I guarantee you that if you look at a thousand of these, chances are you're still not going to find the Red Galactus. I, it took me a while to find this one. So I didn't even know that it existed until I had it in my hand. What I'm going to try to do is to get CGC to create a label for the purple Galactus in the first print. There is no label right now for it or denotation on the book for it. CBCS does have a notation that says Blue Galactus, uh, but not CGC. Now, CGC does have a label for the second print and for the Canadian price variant that's a, a dollar and those I mean just based on um, the first print are rarities because there are much less of them this one there's much less of either one in a first print but um, but there's no notation uh, I haven't seen a CBCS even that says purple Galactus, but at least there says blue Galactus. I don't know if somebody can check CBCS census to see if they have purple Galactus and how many they might have. For all we know, CGC, look, out of the 1700 9.8s on the first print, could there be a couple purple Galactus in there? Yeah, yeah, there could be. But Who's willing to break one out to check, you know? It's a lot of them that are going to be broken out. It might be worth it 
to after the label is created to send your 9.8s in and have them check for the purple galactus see if it is purple and see what it comes back but you, you'll have to pay a, a re-slabbing fee at that point you know CGC won't mind it. There'll be 1,700 new slabs that they're going to... That's business. Now, I'm definitely going to send this book out to get pressed, but it's going to be by Kendra. I'm going to be sending this out tomorrow just to get the best grade possible. I'm hoping that this is going to come back at an 8.0. This is what I mean when I send books out to Kendra. I send them projects. So a lot of the times, yeah, if I get like nine eights from him, it's because he worked it. See that right there? That's the least of my worries with this book, actually. But I think Kendra can get all of that out. This is my biggest worry, and this is why I'm hoping it comes back at an 8.0. An 8.5 in this book would be a plus. But the fact that it's rare, I don't even know how the hell they clipped that. I don't know if that happened during the cut of, you know, when they were cutting these books. Or I don't know how, but it's there. So the back of the book, it's not really that bad, but it's got a little bit of a spine roll. But I think Kendra can do his magic. You see that? Those are ticks that are breaking, you know, maybe maybe 8.5 is a little bit too much. Even if I can get a 7.5 on this, I think it would be a win. But just the fact that it's the Purple Galactus, I think it's worth it to get that CGC notation. Funny how in the back, that back cover doesn't have that clipping. It's just part of the front cover. And that's where the majority of the grade is going to be coming coming off of us from that clip. 7.5, 8 point, 8, I mean, 8.0 is, a, is even 7.5 would be a win. The second print, I don't think is going to be worth slabbing. Uh, this will definitely be around an 8.0. It, it looks really good from the front. And there's a couple of ticks that they shouldn't detract much. But it does have one big flaw that will knock me down. Uh, probably to like a 7.5 or an even 8 with all the other defects. And that's up here. You can hardly tell, but I mean, not to the naked eye like that, right? But if you start putting magnifying glasses, a little bit of a tear on the top. Very small tear, but it's there. And CGC will definitely see it. So, yeah, maybe an 8.0, more than likely a 7.5 on this as well. But uh, I think the 7.5 on a book that doesn't even have a label and that you very rarely see altogether. Uh, I mean, not that this one you see a lot, you know, but in high grade in a second print, it's only 14, 9.8. So that definitely is rare. Uh, there's one on eBay for 600 bucks right now, but it does have a tick right around there. Nine eights are allowed one defect, okay? But um, yeah, they were a little bit generous on that grade, I think. Still, 14 9.8s on second prints. Canadian price variants, 31 9.8s on Canadian price variants. That's how it's how rare that high grade second print is. But in, in say in an 8.0, I'll be lucky to get like 80 bucks maybe for a second print. At least right now in today's market, I'll be lucky to get that. Anyway, that one, it would just be for the collection. It would be for my PC. 
and I I wouldn't be selling that. It's um it's too rare a book. I, I it's very hard to to even find them. I've seen I've seen a second one. I don't think eBay has any right now. They they very rarely do anyway. The, the two that I've seen were on eBay. This one I bought. All right. Later, my dudes. Happy and good hunting. Check your books. See if you have it. You never knew. Later. Have a good night.